These families are learning about home computers. The family with the Atari home computer is learning... Spanish, German... French... Italian... The other... No foreign languages. The Atari family is learning... Three programs teach us to program. The other... We've only one. And while the Atari family learns to play centipede, Star Raiders, and Defender... Gee, neat! The other learned... He made a mistake. Over 2,000 programs with the world's most popular games, but, sorry, only with Atari home computers. into the crater of an active volcano is not everybody's idea of fun. But that's where this Discover story is taking us. As we cross the lip of the crater, we see the smoking dome on the crater floor below us. It's a 700-foot-high mass of hot lava expanding steadily. This is the growing point of the mountain. The volcano is still active. This is the crater at the top of Mount St. Helens, 8,000 feet up in the Cascade Range of the Pacific Northwest. Mount Rainier is about 50 miles that way, Mount Hood about 60 miles to the south in that direction. The crater was formed when the entire summit and this whole side of the mountain blew off in that famous eruption of May 18th, 1980. A unique sequence of still photographs captured the awesome event as it happened as 500 million tons of rock slid down the mountain, unleashing the hot gas and lava inside. After the explosion, volcanic ash continued to spew into the air for days. Yakima, Washington State, 70 miles downwind, was pitch dark at noon. The rivers around the mountain filled with forest wreckage, swept down on torrents of melted ice and snow. And there was evidence of the human tragedy, in which 60 people lost their lives. Well, since then, the mountain has become a focal point for scientific research. Over 150 square miles of rivers and lakes and forests were devastated by the explosion, and scientists saw a unique opportunity to find out how nature would react. Before the eruption, the area around the mountain looked like this. And now, mile after mile of blowdown. Searing hot gases hit the forest at 300 miles an hour. Above ground, everything perished. But underground, amazingly, there were survivors, and the biologists are busy trapping them. A pocket gopher living under the volcanic ash a few miles from the mountain.
few drops of ether will put him to sleep just long enough for Doug Anderson to fix an identification band in place. Then the gopher will be ready for an experiment. One of the big surprises of the Mount St. Helens research has been the number of survivors. Gophers here lived on roots and seeds that remained underground. Now, in this experimental plot, Doug Anderson is studying how the gophers are affecting the land as it struggles back to life. Huge areas around the mountain are covered by a hard, sterile crust of volcanic ash and pumice. This is the habitat the gophers now have to cope with. Doug releases his animal to join the four others already in the enclosure. Quite soon, the gopher starts doing what gophers always do. They dig. And in the process of constructing his tunnel system, the gopher brings up soil from the pre-eruption forest floor, soil that's rich and fertile. that the gopher eventually builds makes a perfect seed bed to be colonized perhaps by seeds also brought up by gophers or perhaps by seeds blown in from the outside. Around the mountain there are teams of botanists following the course of plant recovery. One of several U.S. Forest Service groups struggles through the blowdown to mark out study areas. Okay, Ann, could you move this tape just to your left? No. A little bit? Okay, that's fine. That's online. Okay. Some plant root systems survived like the gophers, underground. Now they're leading the recovery process. Even on this seemingly lifeless moonscape, the new land surface formed by the mountainside as it slid into the valley, the botanists find survivors. A maple sprouting where its uprooted trunk came to rest on top of 200 feet of debris. Another chance survivor, a young fir, protected from the boiling hot gases by snow cover, while its taller companions will never recover. Fir trees are unable to sprout back from the roots once the above ground portion has died. So unless man intervenes by replanting, the blowdown areas will have to go through the long natural process of regrowth that begins like this. The green area had been clear cut, completely logged over before the eruption, then colonized by aggressive weedy plants that can sprout from the roots as they've done here. A search for more of nature's survivors. Conducting the search, biologist Evelyn Merrill with wardens from Washington State Game Department. They're here to hunt for elk. Many elk were killed in the eruption, but recently they've been coming back fast, particularly to the re-sprouting vegetation on the clear cuts. They'll try to pick off one of the animals with a tranquilizer dart. When the tranquilizer brings the elk down, they land on the closest logging road and race to the animal. And roto tag number. 44. There's only a few minutes to work, so Evelyn quickly attaches a radio tracking collar and then checks out the animal's Length, condition. Antler, crown tipped, crown tip at 650. Tail is. 
So far, the elk are thriving on the re-sprouted vegetation, but they usually stay close to tree cover, and now there isn't any. So the radio collar will be used in the months to come to track the animal and see how he copes with this unnatural habitat. The great Mount St. Helens landslide also created a huge mud-filled drainage ditch out of a prime salmon river. At a nearby fish hatchery, Washington University fisheries biologists are collecting a truckload of one-year-old salmon smolts. Again, there's a temporary anesthetic, and then one fin is trimmed as an identification mark. The young fish are to be released into the affected rivers in the spring, the right season for their natural migration to the ocean. Downstream, a collecting net is hauled in every few hours. The river water would normally be clear, but now it's carrying a heavy load of mud, ash, pumice, and forest debris. So the biologists are taking the opportunity to test whether young fish can survive such rough conditions. The river is still supporting some hardier species like this. This is a peamelt. Sorting the catch is made more complicated by the presence of various other hatchery fish. Two more hatchery steelhead. One more hatchery steelhead. One more. And surprisingly, some of their young marked fish are making it down the river. Gradually, they're building up a detailed picture of the river systems as they catch fish with different marks, like this clipped tail planted in different places. All the biologists working around the mountain are hoping to continue their studies over the years. Already it's clear that nature has a wealth of strategies to repair the devastation. In the years to come, there will be much more that we can learn from nature about how to care for our valuable environment. It's as if the eruption were a great natural experiment, which if we care to, we can turn to our advantage. Introducing another first from Atari. It's not a new game program or a home computer program. It's a new service program, Atari Service. Only Atari backs up its video games and home computers with a nationwide system of over 1,500 factory authorized Atari service centers. Call toll free 800-538-8543 to find the Atari service center nearest you. Atari Service, service that's as good as Atari. On our next Discover Special, its inventor admits it's a fraud, but no one else can figure out how this perpetual motion machine works. The dramatic impact of a new drug on transplant surgery. Will organ swaps become routine? And we eavesdrop on monkeys, who come closer to talking than anyone imagined. For these and other stories from the pages of America's Science Magazine, join us next time on Discover. This special program is brought to you in its entirety by Atari, a pioneer in coin video games like Dick Dug, a leader in home video games like Pac-Man, a company that brings you home computers designed specifically for the home. Atari!